In the past couple of lessons, we've been talking about this thing called parity, right? And parity is basically you add up the number or you count the number of ones in data. And if it's an odd number and you're trying to make it so that we have even parity, you have to have a one added to the, to the bit stream in order to make it so that the sum of ones in that stream is always even. Or if we're working towards odd parity, what we're looking at is a sequence of ones and zeros where we need to make sure that uh, that additional bit forces the number of ones in that sequence to always be odd. Now, there was a problem with parity, wasn't there? If I had a single bit change, I knew that there was a problem. And so that the transmitting de device, as things get transmitted to the receiving device, or in the case of storing data, if I'm storing data and I retrieve it and the parity doesn't match up, we know that there was an error and we need to compensate for it. For example, in the case of communications, we need to resend the message. Problem with parity is that it works great if I have an odd number of bit flips. If I have an even number of bit flips though, still looks good. The data still looks good. So we need to go another step. And in fact, there are a couple in the next lesson, in, the, in this lesson, in the next lesson, we're going to talk about a couple of additional ways to check for errors. Now, the one we're going to talk about in this lesson is something called checksums. Now, checksums, there's a number of uses for the term checksum, but what we're going to be talking about right now is the basic checksum, and also we're going to show how the basic checksum is going to be modified a bit to create a ones complement checksum or a twos complement checksum. Those three are always, they're, they're very tightly linked. So let's talk about the data. In fact, let's go ahead and send some data. You know, what is the data that we always, or, or what is the thing that we always try and do anytime we try and uh, to write a new program? We write that hello world thing, right? Well, I'm not going to do all of the bits, but let's just say we're trying to send hello. Now, in hexadecimal, this is what we've got, uh, a hexadecimal 4, 8, and then followed by a 6-5, followed by a 6-C, followed by a 6-C. So the capital H is a 4-8, the lowercase e is a 6-5, the two L's are 6-C's, and then we have an O, which is 6-F, and then we have the exclamation point, which is a 2-1. So all of those values are in hexadecimal. Now, Remember, what we're talking about with parity is we would look at the number of ones in that whole stream because what we're looking at is, is just kind of concatenating this all into one long stream of 4, 8, 6, 5, 6, C, 6, C, 6, F, 2, 1, just all packed up together if we're going to send it along in a serial stream. If I have two bit flips in that serial stream, though, it looks okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to try a slightly different method for adding something at the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to add another byte at the end. So I'm going to send these as byte values. And I'm going to send one more byte in order to check the data to make sure that everything came through okay. Now, in order to do this, this, this idea of a basic checksum or a ones complement or a twos complement is all based on this thing called a data sum. Now the data sum is exactly what it sounds like. It is the sum of the data. So we are going to take this hexadecimal 48, we're going to add it to 6, 5. Now when we add this to 6, 5, what is uh, 8 plus 5, and I'm going to do hexadecimal arithmetic here, kind of hold the line because, you know, it's not natural for us to think in hexadecimal arithmetic, but 8 plus 5, that's 13. 13 in hexadecimal, well, 10 is A, B, C, D. So this is a D. There's no carry because 8 plus 5 was able to be contained in a single hexadecimal digit. 4 plus 6, that's 10, which in hex is A. All right. So when we add this, this byte to this byte, we get AD. So let's go ahead and add the next byte. So we add 6C. 
Now, when we add 6c, what we've got is, well, d, that's 13, c is 12, so 13 plus 12, that's 25. That's bigger than 16, so we're going to have a carry into the next column. That carry is going to take 16 out of 25, and so we're left with 9 here with a carry into the next column. a is 10, 10 plus 1, that's 11. 17, 17 is bigger than 16, bigger than 16, so we take a 16 out to act as the carry and have the one down in this column, and then that carry falls down. Now, how big did I want this result? Well, I wanted this result to be only a single byte. Um, and so this carry, we gotta do something with it. Well, we could discard it, but convention shows that what we actually do is we just simply add that back in. Any carries that pop out the top, we're going to actually add back into the number. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 1 and add it to the 1, 9. 9 plus 1 is 10, which is A in hex, and then there's no carry, so that 1 just drops down. So when we add AD to 6C, we actually get 119, but we take that carry that went out of the byte width and add it back in to get 1A. All right. Let's look at 6C, adding 6C again, because what we've done is we've added the first three, now we add, and add the second L, the 6C. So A is 10, C is 12, so that becomes 22, bigger than 16, so we pull a 16 out. We're left with 6 and a carry into the next column. 1 plus 1 plus 6 is 8. So we've got 8, 6. This doesn't generate a carry into the next, or generate a carry out of the byte width. So we're going to, uh, we don't need to add anything back in. Let's continue this up here. So we've got 8, 6. Now we need to add 6F to it, right? Now F is 15. 15 plus 6, that's 21. So really what we need to do is pull 16 out of 21. We've got 5, get a carry into the next column. 1 plus 8, that's 9. Plus uh, 16, that's, uh, excuse me, plus 6 is 15. So we've got F5 at this point. All right, no carry, so we don't need to worry about that. 2, 1. 2, 1 hex and F5. 5 plus uh, 1 is 6, F plus 2, that is 17, we pull 16 out of 17, we've got 1, and there's a carry in the next column, that generated that carry out of the byte, so we need to add that guy back into 16, or 1, 6, so 1, 6 plus 1 is 1, 7, so 1, 7, this is our data sum, all right? Now, what we'll do is use this data sum as a way to check all of this, or check the bytes that we've sent. Now, if I send all of these bytes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the XX with 17. This is one option. One option is to replace the XX with 17. And so you send Instead of just sending the six bytes that make up the hello exclamation point, we send seven bytes along so we can add that checksum. Whenever, you, whenever the receiving device receives this, then what it does is it simply goes, okay, I'm going to add this to this to this to this to this to this. And knowing that this is the last byte, it uses the same process on the receiving end, and it should get the 17, and it just does a quick compare and says, hey, they're equal. Cool, we got the right value. Not equal, hey, sender, please resend the message. So that's one way that data sums can be used in order to check a stream of bytes. There are other ways to do it though. There's also this thing called a ones complement checksum. Now, what the ones complement checksum does is it takes the bitwise inverse of the data sum. So the ones complement is just the bitwise inverse of the data sum. All right. And then that seems kind of weird. Why would you go through this extra step? Well, let me show you. 
The bitwise inverse of 17. Well, first of all, 17 is just 0001. That's the first nibble. And then 7 is 0111. All right. So the bitwise inverse of that is just simply 11101000. All right. Now, this value, which just so happens to equal, what is that, E8? So in the case of a ones complement bitwise, uh, in the bitwise inverse, instead of sending the one seven, we send E8. Now what happens? Well, there's a slightly different process. What happens is the receiving device adds 4.8 to 6.5 to 6c to 6c to 6f to 2.1, and then it also adds E8. It just adds the whole data stream, including the checksum. Why? Well, what happens when we add, and let me go ahead and kind of clear my E8 here for a second so I've got a little bit of room. What happens whenever I add what should have been the data sum, which is the sum that the receiver would have received at that point in the string, what happens if it adds E8? Well, it should just get all ones. And so this is just a real quick check. If I'm receiving this, all I simply do is I add everything together, including E8, and if I get all ones, I know that there was no, I don't need to do any comparison at all. I just continue adding everything up. If the result, the final result is all ones, which by the way is a negative one in two's complement, I know that I had successful data. If it's anything other than this, I ask the sender to resend that data because something got corrupted along the way. All right. Any guesses as to what the twos complement checksum looks like? Well, the twos complement checksum The twos complement checksum is what? It's just the negative. And I think I'm running out of my board space here, but it's the negative of the data sum. All right. And I think I've just gone a little bit below what you can see in the screen, but basically the twos complement checksum is just, you just take the negative. What was the negative? Well, in two's complement, what you did was you took the one's complement, remember, and we added one to it. So what we've got here is this right here is the one's complement. So we add one to this and we get one, 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 zero, one, zero, zero, one. So this right here is E9. So instead of sending E8, we send E9. These are just different ways that we can use this data sum based checksum. So the receiving device takes 48 plus 65 plus 6C plus 6C plus 6F plus 21 plus E9. And since E9 is the negative of 17, and 17 is what we should have gotten at this point, when I add 17 to E9, what should I get? Zero. And so the twos complement checksum, whenever I get to get through adding all the bytes of my data stream together, I should get a result of zero. Zero says no errors have occurred. Don't worry about resending the data. If I get anything else, go ahead and resend that data because there was an error that occurred. Now in this particular example, what I've done is I've made it so that I am adding the bytes together. And so I've automatically defined the width of my data sum to be a byte. That's not necessarily the case all the time. For example, whenever we're talking about uh, TCP IP, um, the, the networking protocol, we use, I believe in one of them, it's a ones complement checksum, but instead of being a byte width, it's two bytes long four nibbles, okay? So in that case, what we're doing is we're actually going to take and we're gonna keep adding our groups of 16 bits together in order to get our checksum. If I'm adding these groups of 16 bits together, then I need to make sure that my data, the data itself, is exactly, it's, it's being sent in 16-bit chunks. 
so um, that I don't get some sort of, I, I, well, I may need to add some padding here at the end in order to make it so that, for example, this right here can be divided into three 16-bit values. But if I had had a, a seven a seven character string to send, I would have needed to add padding at the end in order to make it so that I could divide that up into groups of 16 chunks of 16 bits. Works the same exact way, it's just it's going to be 16-bit edition instead of 8-bit edition. And so whenever we're talking about the data sum, the transmitter and the receiver right up front have to agree on two things. First of all, the size of the data blob, the size of the, the data elements that they're sending. We agreed right up front here that we were sending 8-bit elements. And the second thing that they thing they need to uh, agree on when we're talking about data sum based checksums is whether we're going to do with the data sum, the ones complement, or the twos complement. Right up front, we got to understand that this is how we're doing it, so that we don't actually ask for a resend when there were no errors because we weren't agreeing ahead of time how we were going to check the data. All right, now. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about something a little bit more advanced in terms of data, uh, in terms of error detection in our data streams, because it turns out there's a small problem with the data sums. We'll talk about that in the next lesson.